Hey guys, it's Logan here with Hydra572. Today I want to talk about how I've been thinking about and organizing my EDC lately. I've been calling this the tiered EDC, even though the main underlying principle I'm talking about is modularity. Modular EDC just sounded way too tactical, I didn't want to get everybody excited, have to deal with a whole bunch of red rockets. You guys know the deal. Plus, you know, tiered is just kind of the word that I thought of first. Anyways, this system is predicated on the idea that I'm not always wearing the right clothes to allow me to carry a full-on thorough and comprehensive EDC the way that I would like to. If it was left to me, I'd always be wearing a pair of cargo shorts or cargo pants with lots of pockets that were great, kept things separated, kept things secure, my EDC was great and raring to go. Unfortunately, I live in the real world and that's just not the case. Sometimes I leave the house wearing a pair of gym shorts because I'm just planning on running out to go get groceries or I'm actually going to the gym the one or two times a month that that happens. Anything like that can cause me to leave the house not wearing the proper clothes for a great EDC. I also work as a lifeguard, so a lot of times I'm wearing a pair of swim trunks directly after work, directly before work. You guys know the drill. In the real world, we simply can't have the perfect amount of equipment with us all the time. And so this just sort of happened to me. It's nothing that I really invented, but a certain set of tools became my norm and I sort of build from there. So here you see the tools that I try really, really hard to never leave the house without. I mean, these two are pretty self-explanatory, wallet and phone. I think most people don't leave without those. I didn't even throw my car keys up on the log because, you know, if I'm getting in my car, I have my keys. Those are some pretty simple pedestrian items. But these three here, I think, are very interesting. You guys have heard me talk about these for 20 minutes or so on end now. I was going to say hours, but that's just not true. We have the Phoenix LD01 flashlight, great little light. We have the Cold Steel Mini Tough Light, one of my favorite knives of all time, and we have the Leatherman Style PS, by far the multi-tool that I've gotten the most use out of. These items are really great. They have a lot of capability, and they simply have no footprint in my pocket. They're incredibly easy to carry. I carry these two in my left pocket with this one clipped outside my left pocket, and I clip this off a belt loop on my right. It doesn't impede anything else that I want to carry in my pocket, no matter what it is. These items are really easy to carry, and honestly, I feel pretty naked if I leave the house without them. Now, if we were to sort of step up a tier, and maybe I've got a little bit more pocket space now, maybe it's still gym shorts, but I'm thinking that I might end up in a situation where I'll need an actual knife, then we might upgrade to a more mid-sized, smaller size of mid-sized knife, like, say, the Native is one of my favorites in this size range. I've got plenty of them, though, say, Kershaw Echelon. It's a pretty similar size. Or, a little bit smaller, we have the Centafonte 3. I would put a knife like this in my pocket to sort of upgrade me to a tier two. Now I've got a knife that's a little bit better suited for defense, and it's quite a bit more blade length if I end up doing any kind of utility cutting. So that's sort of my tier two. As we move up from there, maybe now I'm wearing a pair of jeans that's got only the four real functional pockets, and uh, I'll keep this bad boy clipped outside my left pocket, stow something like this in my back pocket, and then in my front right pocket, Relatively quickly, I want to bring in a relatively huge piece of metal. For the simple reason that I'm 18 and in Colorado I can open carry something like, say, the Smith & Wesson M&P 9, but I just don't do it very often. It's not really practical for my lifestyle as a student and as somebody who works in a government building, so I can't really have the pistol as often as I can have something like this. Plus, I've got years of carrying stuff like this, whereas just now, maybe two months, I've been able to carry the pistol. So as a self-defense option, I'll carry a big blade like this relatively soon as I'm building my EDC. If I've got the space, I want to have something that large. If I have a little less pocket space, I'll go for something just a little bit smaller, like, say, the Espada. There are actually pockets that I have that won't fit this, that will fit this, even though, you know, they're within two inches of each other. So that's maybe my Tier 3. I have a pretty good utility cutter in my back pocket. Got something to back me up should I need to, you know, do anything that's really dirty, need to get in. And, you know, I treat this blade really well, but I would rather do something abusive with this knife than with this knife. As we move into Tier 4, we start to incorporate our 4-inch folders, one of my favorite styles of knives. I've been raving about them for a long time. And into Tier 4, this would replace the native style knife in my back right pocket. I typically don't go above three knives for an EDC. I find that three is a really good number that you can have a utility cutter, something that's sort of in between, and then a large defensive folder. So there are my knives. Moving up from there, I might add in something like 
Victorinox Swiss tool. Might add in a Maglite EXL or XL50. Another great four inch folder that I've been loving lately is the Protec TR4. And I might add in some little gadgety accessories like my Bastion power bank. So you guys see as we move into that tier 4, tier 5 EDC, we have a relatively extensive EDC here. There's a lot of capability on this table. And honestly, I wouldn't be incorporating heavy things that are difficult to carry like the Victorinox Swiss tool, the uh, XL50. I wouldn't put things like this in my EDC unless I just didn't know what kind of day I was going to have. Maybe I'm driving into a different city to help a friend move, something like that, where I just don't know what kind of work is going to be required of me. The area that I tend to hover, if given the right pair of pants and all those sorts of things, I tend to hover right around there. There's a somewhat indicative EDC, what I've been doing lately. And the really cool thing about this, this is sort of a middle of the road between my tier 4 and my tier 5, is there's a lot of capability here, but most of my problems can be solved with those original three tools that we talked about. Most any utility cutting that I have to do, I'm in the middle of a Safeway, I need to open a package, something like that, I can do it with this, not have to worry about the sheeple at all. If there's anything that I drop into a dark area, I have to go scope it out. That's probably going to handle it. I probably don't need to upgrade to something that bright. I've found that most things that I need to do with a pair of pliers, this bad boy handles just fine. And if I need to do any in the middle cutting or if I need to defend myself, I've got two blades that are just great for that. But I still have those tools that I've got with me every day that I'm pretty dang comfortable with. I can rotate these things through and not compromise that core of my EDC. So that's how I've been organizing my everyday carry lately. I've been rotating a lot of blades through to get them timed so that I can write them a review. But uh, this is a pretty good lineup. Sometime here in the near future, I'll give you guys an actual full-on EDC update where I talk about how I make my different decisions of which big knife I'm going to carry and which middle-of-the-road knife I'm going to carry, all those sorts of things. But uh, I just wanted to get a video out there and sort of explain how I've been thinking about it and just remind people that failing everything else... If you're in a pair of gym shorts or a bathrobe or a pair of boxers or whatever it is, you can almost always spare enough space to add three items just like that to your normal EDC with your wallet, your phone, your car keys, etc. These things just don't weigh enough to prohibit anyone from carrying them at any point in time, and there is a lot of capability. Like I said, this is often in a spot on my pocket where I can get to it real easy, flick it open and do some EDC cutting, never have to worry about sheeple, never have to worry about anybody looking at me, all those good things. I use this thing a lot more often than I use the Swiss tool. There's a lot of good to be said about having small tools that you'll carry consistently. I mean, it doesn't really matter what you're carrying the one day out of the month that you're carrying the most items. What really matters about fighting the EDC fight and trying to stay prepared is what you've got with you when you're least prepared. And that's what I think is cool about a modular or a tiered EDC is you can get really comfortable with some relatively cheap, relatively small items and then always plan on having them with you. And then anything else that you might add in later is bonus. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more of the same.